Hello and welcome to another edition of the Travel Calumet Original Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Sense, and with me today is Bonnie Keys from Mulberry Lane Farm. Welcome to the program. Hi, Rick. Nice to have you here today. And can you maybe just start by letting listeners know what Mulberry Lane Farm is, first of all? Well, Mulberry Lane Farm is first known as a children's petting farm. We're in Hilbert, Wisconsin. That's our physical area address. However, we're just three miles east of Sherwood, so we often reference that, just three miles east on County Road B in the township of Woodville in the sleepy community of St. John. Well, that sounds really hard to get to, but it's (laughs) not because I've been by it. It's very easy to get to, folks, so don't let that all that dissuade you from showing up because it's definitely worth the trip. Um, And how long have you been uh, running Mulberry Lane Farm? We bought the farm in early 2005 and opened our doors to the public October 1st of that same year. Okay, and you said we, is there, who's your partner in the process? Well, it was a three-way partnership when we purchased purchased it, my husband and I and my mother-in-law who has since passed away, Connie Keys. Okay, and now you've been doing this and what is, what are the things that you love most about it? What the experience that you're able to provide for folks? What do you, what do you love to do? Well, you're asking a born and raised city girl, born and raised in Appleton, married my husband uh, in 1977, and at the time he was going to college at Stevens Point. And he has a petting farm experience in his blood, let's say. He was born and raised in Waterford, which is about 30 miles south of Milwaukee. And his family had a hog farm that they through a series of events, converted it to a children's petting farm. And Pat is one of 13 children. And all 13 children were involved in the petting farm. They would give tours. They would give pony rides. If it was a big field trip day, rumor has it they were even held back from school because they had to help. And so upon graduation from high school, all 13 of them said that there has to be more to life than this. So they left the farm, went out and about, and the oldest brother, the second oldest brother, ended up with a banking position in Houston, Texas, and he's looking out of his office window one day, and he sees these school buses going by, and he thinks, where are they going on a field trip in the city of cement? He has this harebrained idea, calls mom and dad keys down in Waterford, and says, what do you think about starting a Green Meadows farm down here? And they called some of the brothers together, those that were married, the wives, we went down as well. And that was the first satellite. And it kind of snowballed and the brothers came out of corporate America, started their own farms. And we've had as many as 10 family owned farms throughout the US from California to New York, Florida to Wisconsin. But it wasn't until my husband turned 50, he had a midlife crisis, I tease him, and he said, I want to get back out in the country. And we had the opportunity to purchase the Schwabenlander homestead, and um, unbeknownst to me, I should have known, but maybe naive, we started our children's petting farm. So I have just really enjoyed see, seeing the city folks coming in and seeing where their food is produced or having that opportunity to milk a cow or hold a chicken, uh, feel the wool of a sheep that they don't get to do on a daily basis like us farmers now take advantage of. So being from Wisconsin and, and I've lived here my whole life and I've seen the, the, the family farm change dramatically over the years um, and I'm sure you have as well and, and Bonnie and, and, and you're basically keeping the heritage of the family farm alive, aren't you, by by educating today's kids about what life on a farm is like? Because a lot of the kids today aren't growing up with that. What kind of things do you hear from the kids when they're out there experiencing that for the first time? Well, it it is exciting because even the adults, maybe even so more so from the adults, uh, to feel and touch and hear and you know all their senses are are moving when they visit a farm where our farm is steeped in history uh 
if we have the opportunity, maybe we can talk about the history of the Schwabenlander homestead. Uh, but we're trying to stay true to uh, the, the farm heritage. And even Calumet is known for being steeped in agriculture and the dairy farms, what have you. So we want to preserve that heritage. We're keeping the red barns, we're keeping them up. We display tons of antiques, some of the old tractors that uh, are, were used years and years ago. And uh, just having the opportunity to, to share that with the public it is exciting. And like you asked about the children, for them to catch a chicken or mm -hmm. to to see the milk come from the cow and realize this is where it comes from. It's not from a grocery shelf. And the pigs are, are, are a hit for them to see these newborn piglets that are three, four pounds. And just the oohs and ahs. And I actually had a child once, once exclaim that this was better than Christmas. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, let's talk about the history. Uh, maybe you can lis uh, let listeners know um, maybe some of the, the, the timeline of, the, of the, the family history prior to, to your ownership mm -hmm. of the facility and, and maybe walk them through the experience of things you've had to do over the years to, to kind of keep that heritage and that experience and that history alive. Well, one of the first things you see when you pull into the farm is the huge red barn and known as the haymow. And that was built somewhere between 1876 and 1881. The house was built in 1881, so we know the barn was built prior to that. And the dairy barn below, people enjoy going in there to just feel the coolness of the rock walls. The foundation there was from pulled from the Niagara Escarpment. Our farm is on the Niagara Escarpment and that limestone was used. There's evidence of mining of it right in the back of our farm. And then the roof rafters and the floor joists are from the Tamrock Swamp that is just a, about a mile or two away from the farm. So this beautiful, huge red barn just is a, a pillar there. Unfortunately, at one time, it, it did see tragedy about 18, 13 to 18 years after it was built. It was struck by lightning. Back in the 1800s, there was no such thing as the lightning rods. Mm -hmm. And when lightning struck it, it burnt, and it was a total loss. Okay. So they rebuilt the barn uh, right away, and only 18 months later, a let me back up. The farm at the time was established by the Prechtel family. Okay. And Joseph Schwabenlander was dating a Prechtel girl. Okay. And they were actually engaged to get married. So Joseph Schwabenlander was helping the Prechtels thrashing grain, and a spark from a wood-burning engine drifted into the oh, hay no. mow. Okay. And it went down for a second wow. time. snake bit, it yes. sounds like. Yeah, okay. So John Prechtel because he had just built it 18 months earlier, didn't have the finances to rebuild it. So Joseph Schwabenlander bought the farm from John Prechtel and paid to have the barn rebuilt in record time because October 1st of that year, he and Francis Prechtel were getting married. Okay. So they, they acted real... And the wedding was at the, at the farm? Correct. Okay. All right. And who would know uh, how many... Years later, in 2010, we actually hosted our first wedding at the farm. Okay. So what goes around comes around, Certainly, I guess. Certainly, yeah. So okay. we as well do, do weddings in the big barn. Okay. So you've got this historically significant structure in place at the, and, and some fabulous history. What do you find bridges that history with the, the kids and the parents that, that come out and visit? Is it the animals? Is it the buildings? Is it just the, the collective atmosphere of the entire farm? What would you say is that unifying factor that brings people back in time to the experience that they're, they, they have at the at Mulberry Lane Farm? Actually, everything that you mentioned. Okay. There was a day where you would spend every weekend at Grandma and Grandpa's out at the farm. 
after church on Sunday, you'd ride to grandma and grandpa's and have lunch, what have you. The, the family farm is a dying breed. It's a thing of the past. And we have the privilege of being able to bring those memories back to life. Uh, the, the young families now are wanting to go back to uh, teaching their children where their food comes from. And the adults that visit, it's so much fun to see them interact with their grandchildren, showing them what they experienced as a child. Many of them were raised on a dairy farm, and they'll share, yeah, Grandpa, I used to milk 20 of these a day. And that was a lot back in the day. And to carry on that heritage and show them how to milk the cow and and how to care for the animals and that. And then the, for them to be able to look at the old equipment and the old tools and often hearing grandpa or grandma say, I remember using that meat ground, grinder on the farm. Um, it, it just warms your heart. So I, I pull up, uh, my family's with me, we, we park, we get out of our car. What are we gonna experience? Well, you come into the granary, another old, very old structure, and then we give you directions. They're self-guided tours, what we call them. And you can go from pen to pen at your leisure. We'll have people, we call them chicken sitters. They sit in the chicken coop, and chickens will just come and cover them, sit on their laps, sit on their heads. We have families that will spend a good amount of time in our kitten barn or our bunny barn. So you go from pen to pen at your leisure. We have the nooks and crannies, the step back in time barn, uh, other places throughout the farm that you can walk through and look at the antiques. And we do allow carry-in, so a lot of families like to pack a picnic lunch and make a day of it. Okay. Even our old-fashioned play area, we want children to... Uh, experience using their mind on the farm. They've left their phones behind, their iPads behind. They have to create their their own fun. So we have the tractors that they can climb on. We have the old tractor tires and the, the grain boxes and the corn bin and just running around and playing and being a kid. Mm-hmm. So if you were if you're going to recommend to someone um, that's coming out to visit, what would you tell them that they should wear? How should they dress to enjoy their time the most at, at Mulberry Lane Farm? Well, we recommend wearing clothes, closed shoes simply because pigs are the smartest farm animal. However, I believe if they see a toe in a sandal painted red with red nail polish, I'm not so sure they're smart enough to know that that's a toe and not a cherry. <laughs> so okay. just to you know, keep in mind, you are going to visit animals, and animals are animals. Mm-hmm. And to, to be safe, we do recommend closed shoes. But the farm is very well manicured, very well kept. Uh, it's not a, a mud show or you know, you're not going to be a, in manure up to your ankles. But just wearing comfortable, casual clothes. I always recommend dress in layers. It might be cool in the morning, warm in the afternoon. But, um, you know, don't be afraid to get a little dirty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it's uh, season is coming up, I'm assuming. When do you open officially for the season? Well, we open May 1st. Okay. Opening weekend, we feature our spring baby farm animals. That's always a huge hit. The kid goats and the little lambs, the piglets, the calves, the baby chicks, the baby ducklings, the kittens, the bunnies. Baby, baby, do we have babies? <laughs> okay. And then followed closely behind the next weekend is Mother's Day weekend. It's amazing the families that have made it an annual event. Every Mother's Day they come out. Mom is free with another's paid admission. So they, they just make it a day. Okay. And I, I noticed that I saw your ad in the uh, Travel Calumet uh, Visitor's Guide. Uh, do you want to just maybe tell listeners about the, the advertisement that you run? Yes, absolutely. That? They can reach out to Calumet County to get one of the booklets. 
doesn't only promote Mulberry Lane Farm, but all the wonderful things to see and do in Calumet County. But we do have a coupon in there. Okay. And uh, one person is free with two others paid admission. So it's a great opportunity to save a little bit of money, but still have a wonderful activity to do. Okay. And, I, and I've heard um, on good authority that uh, you encourage people to uh, kiss a pig. Is that true? They certainly can. Okay. Um, you know, there's, we have a teenage pig pen okay. that the pigs are a little bit older, a month to two months old. So you can go right in there and feel the pig hide and see, interact with it. It's, we call ourselves a petting farm simply because I feel a petting zoo, a zoo implies you're on the outside of the pen looking in. Here you're going right into the pen. So it's not unusual for me to see somebody on their hands and knees just snout to nose with a pig. You know, everything on a pig is used except for its squeal. Its <laughs> eyes are used in human eye transplants, their heart valves. My father-in-law received a pig's valve, and I teased him that instead of snoring, now he oinks. <laughs> uh, the hide of the pig is used in footballs. Their hair is used to make fine paintbrushes. So we also, besides interacting with the animals, we try to also educate our guest about some of the things they're interacting with. Are you closed for winter? Is that? We pretty? are closed for winter. We're open May 1st through October 31st. Okay. Spring, of course, like I mentioned, we feature our spring baby farm animals throughout the month of May, even into June. Summer, we're open again to the public. A lot of families like to come out during summer break simply, again, because we allow that carry-in so they can pack that picnic lunch and spend the entire day. And it always seems cooler out in the country. Mm -hmm. That summer breeze, we're on the Niagara Escarpment. We're high, elevated high in Calumet County, so there's a nice breeze. Summer, therefore, is very popular. And then, of course, in fall, you get to pick your own free pumpkin that's included with your admission. So fall is a wonderful time on the farm as well. Uh, what other things would you recommend? A family is there. I mean, obviously they can spend a whole day at your facility, it sounds like. Uh, mm -hmm. What other things would you say to the people that are maybe camping for a long weekend or a week? And what other opportunities are, are around for them to go visit and see and do things in Calumet County? Do you have an hour? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a lot to do. Uh, probably the most popular coming from the farm, they'll stop in Sherwood at Frogs. Or if you're headed in the other direction, uh, headed to Sherwood, or I'm sorry, Chilton, they'll stop at Scoops. And uh, there's wonderful places to eat. And what are frogs and scoops for the listeners oh. out there that might not know? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both ice cream stops. Okay. Wonderful ice cream at both places. If you go to Frogs, a tadpole fills me up, and it's another opportunity to just sit out in the country. They have cow pasture in the back, and... Uh, enjoy the country scene. If you were to tell somebody that says agriculture, yeah, whatever, it's not that important, and, and why do we need to know about it, and, and things like that, what would you tell them about the importance of what you're or what you're doing on your location and, and its whole overarching impact on the agricultural world in our in our state and in its heritage? What would you tell them is the importance of your farm? The family farm, I believe, is three to four generations removed. Uh, the younger generation just isn't taking over the family farm. So it's, it's starting to die. And we, farming is such, is so important, one, for our food source. And going back to, to that uh, heritage, going back to where it all began and, and preserving the, the look of the farm, preserving the importance of the farm. I'm just privileged to be a part of that. So if people want to get a hold of you, uh, what's the best way for them to do that, Bonnie, as far as finding out information about the facility and, and things like that? They can certainly visit our Facebook page or visit our website at mulberrylanefarmwi.com. Check it out. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're here to help you. Sounds great. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.